Welcome back to the channel. Today we're sitting here trying to be warm. It's actually not cold outside. AJ said it's warmer outside than it is in here. But right now we have a fire going and it feels really good. Unfortunately, we're not on the Jeep today. We have switched gears because AJ feels like he needs four wheel drive on the Cummins swap. I don't know why we're in November. He just, he feels he has that four wheel drive. We never finished it. I'm just here difficult is, like that. Yes, he is difficult like that. Here is the shift lever linkage for the four-wheel drive. We did not finish this because we were in a hurry to get on to something else because these projects, when they stretch out for nine months, they do get kind of old. So we had to do something else. Anyway, what we have to do is this is the bracket that would have bolted to the transmission, the original five-speed automatic, and the shift linkage that came through the floor. And what we got to do is we need to build a plate to bolt this to on the side of our splicer transmission. Uh, there are mounting bosses on the side of the transmission for a clutch, so I think we're just going to be able to build a rectangle plate and be able to bolt all this together. And then being our transfer case is now further back, I don't know how far yet, we're just going to cut this right here and we'll weld in a piece of angle or square tube or something just to get us that extra length. That's what we're doing today. Oh, we need to redo our cross member and we also need to do a measure for our drive shaft because we don't know what we're doing for a front drive shaft. We might just use a piece of square tube or who knows, we'll figure something out. But on to the next. So there's two mounting bosses on the side of the transmission. I think it's for the clutch originally. We got this right here was bolted to the side of the transmission, the automatic transmission. This was kind of a bracket that we're not actually using anymore. So what we've done is we cut this piece of steel three by six, and we're gonna see about mounting it up to the side here, and we'll try and get you up and show you what's going on. So this shifter here has to go something like that. So the idea is we take this plate, we gotta drill some holes, but I mean, pretty much. We can round, we can round out the corners and everything, but that's kind of what we're thinking. That's actually pretty simple. Uh, so what I think we'll do, is we'll put the nice edge down do that and we'll measure measure out these holes and we'll get them drilled something like that something like that right there and then we'll figure out where this needs to go figure out the orientation of this and we'll mark that hole and we'll get that drilled and then we do have to put a nut on the back side but that shouldn't be too big of a deal <laughs> so let's measure mark and drill. A piece of metal is six inches wide. That's just what we found. The holes are exactly four inches apart. So that's uh, actually pretty easy to work with here. So we do one right there. Do one right there. We have our nice heated workspace here. Very nice for working. You can go to the handy dandy drill press. One threaded in. Will the other. Will the other one. Uh, I know my hand's right in the way. Hey, get out of the way. People are trying to watch. Look at that. Wow. It's going to push out on that boot just a little bit, but it's not terrible. We probably need to be like right here. One of the things we're dealing with is this, uh, this old snap-on creeper is bent and missing about all of its wheels, so it's really annoying right now. I gotta buy a new one. But it won't be from Snap-on, it'll probably be from uh, Harbor Freight. All right, Tim, you got it where you want it? Yeah, what do you think of that? All right, so the position that we just showed under the truck puts the uh, shifter handle right there, which looks good to me. So I think we're gonna roll with that. You saw this up there, these two mount to the transmission. This right here is where the shoulder bolt has to go through to hold our shifter linkage. Operator error once again. Let's see if this works and then we'll uh, 
lunchtime yet? Dude, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> we started earlier today than normal, so now we want to go to lunch earlier. We got to get a nut for the back of that bowl because it's metric and we don't have metric. Um, but that's, that's going to work, I think. And that, we just got to clean that plate up, we'll round the corners, polish it all off, and shoot it with some paint while we run into Ace to grab uh, breakfast and a nut. Just don't AJ paint polished them. it all up for us, rounded the corners. Just don't paint the camera lens, Tim. <laughs> oh. Wow, who knew that the uh, camera tripod was going to be a nice little paint holder. <laughs> There's our bracket, all nicely dried with my fingerprints. So what we're gonna do, we can't, it's pretty symmetrical, we can't remember which way it goes. So we're just gonna put it together and see what happens. So we put that in there. We went and got ourselves a nut. This is a Ford 2010, and yet we have a 9 16 thread on here. It's not metric, it's not half, it's not three quarter. It's 9 16 We're gonna go ahead and put some Loctite on that. We're gonna snug it down, we're gonna cut it off flush, and we're gonna test fit it. That's way too much, which is perfect. Yes, I know, I'm not on camera. Tim narrates his life even like he's on camera, even if he's not. <laughs> I touched the paint. Jeez, oh Pete. This extra thread will end up hitting the, um, the back of the transmission, so we gotta lop that off clean. I guess that'll have to do. There we have it. That will bolt to the transmission. Let's see if it works. Now this is gonna be a little more challenging now here. Scratching the paint. All right, there we go. We're gonna end up taking this back off. There we go. I like it. So that's two wheel drive, that's four wheel drive. There we go. So now, we need to figure out, here's our linkage, can you see this over here? Ooh, this one's nicely tore up. There's our linkage, or our where the linkage hooks on. And we're only like 18 inches too short and all. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so you just saw the linkage go in underneath. So now we've just taken the inside handle, hooked it up to that linkage, because that's the linkage that goes down underneath the truck. This is where the two connect. And it's in the two-wheel drive position, just like that. So we'll take our measurement and get that piece made. So we need to be 25 and a quarter from this pivot point here to this pivot point here. So we found this piece of rod, which is going to work perfectly for what we're doing. But we just gotta be 25 and a quarter, center to center. All right, so we gotta go over the makeshift. through there, I mean up through there. There we go. I think it is too. There we go. Oh yeah, it just sat. There, so now let's pull that down. There, that's factory right there. Professional. Broken factory. Broken factory. Now we have four wheel drive and mm. I can't get my ratchet on there. Four wheel drive that goes to nowhere. That looks pretty good. It could stand some new bushings, but it'll work. Yep. Sweet. Let's go in the cab and get that hooked up. Let's go full wheeling. All right. Let's get this hooked up up in here. Now that we got it down there, let's see if I can do this one-handed. And I probably should point the camera at what I'm doing. <laughs> it helps. Okay. So we don't have a bolt in there right now, but that's okay. Tim told me I don't need a bolt. So let's see if this thing will shift. That's what we're at. We got that. At least you got it right this time. Yeah. AJ's <laughs> messing me up. 
We got the shifter linkage for the four-wheel drive all done. It's working perfect, exactly how we want it. Now we need to fix that transmission cross member we built. We weren't really thinking when we slapped it all together, it goes right in front of where the, four, the front drive shaft goes. We don't have the right metal. We want to do it right this time instead of scabbing it all together. So we're gonna run and grab a piece of like one by three channel or something so we can come down under the transmission and then under the drive shaft and back up and make it look really nice, really strong, and fully functional. So let's go to the store and get some metal. All right, guys, meet our newest addition to our uh, workforce. The old snap-on, every time I got new wheels for it, they just keep coming out and stripping out. And so it's an old one, it's bent, and it just doesn't roll in the dirt and stuff very well. So we decided to pick this bad boy up over at Harbor Freight. And we'll let you know if we like it or not. Take a couple weeks and check it out. The front drive shaft is now a wee bit longer because the transfer case is a lot further back. We are trying to modify the rear drive shaft to become the front drive shaft. The flange on the transfer case is the same. The rear axle uses a four, a four bolt flange as well, but the front axle just uses a U-joint. This U-joint, I believe, is a 1410. The front U-joint is, I believe, to a 1350. So we're trying to get this rusty, crusty U-joint out to verify it's a 1410, because we're just gonna get an adapter U-joint to go from 1410 to 1350 because the length is perfect. Our original rear drive shaft will bolt into where our front drive shaft now needs to be. So we're trying to pop this crusty U-joint out of here so I can verify the measurements to see if this is indeed a 1410. Yeah, so we got that cap out. We measured it, here we go. This cap measures 1.88, 1.188. This measures 1.188 and four inches wide or just over. So that means this is a 1410. The other drive shaft for the front has the same diameter cap, 1.188, but it's only three and five eighths wide. That's a 1350. What we've done is we've ordered two U-joints, so we have an extra, that will reduce this monster 1410 down to a 1350. Our rear drive shaft, original gas rear drive shaft, is gonna bolt right in to be our front drive shaft. Length is perfect, everything is perfect, you can't argue with it. So we're gonna continue trying to get this apart to make life easier when we get it, <clears throat> yep. but, um, we might have to just blow it out with the torch. Yeah. All right, somebody broke the skid steer, so we gotta fix that. We won't mention any names, AJ. Yeah, it was me. So, <clears throat> the pin that goes through there connects right to there, or goes through both of those. Uh, the pin broke right in half. I didn't even have that much weight on it. It snapped right in half. So we got a new pin. We're gonna put the new pin in. Uh, see how long that one lasts for. But what we gotta do is we gotta press these back together and then get the new pin in. So we did break the bushing up a little bit, as you can see. Pretty sharp right there. We're gonna run it like that for a little while until I get a new one. And that's what we're gonna end the day with. We got our new Zircon, new pin in. Throw some grease on it and hopefully it lasts it forever. Progress on four wheel drive for the Cummins swap. We figured out how to make the front drive shaft work. We have U joints ordered. We got the shift linkage all made up, worked out perfect. We really ran out of time with the two trips into town getting the steel and food to get that new cross member made. We'll get that done next time. If you haven't seen or uh, checked out our videos on the Duramax Swap Jeep, the Duramax Swap Avalanche, or the Cummins Swap, go back and check those out. We'll be back on the Jeep here in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification. We'll catch you next time.